there. So today I'm going to show you how to make magic pixel art in Google Sheets. So first things first, you need a blank Google Sheet open. And we're going to make our columns that will hold our questions and answers first. So I'm going to highlight the columns A and B and some rows in A and B. So I'm going to highlight A1 and B1 and then go all the way down to 13. I can add more or take away some if I need to as I go on. Now to draw the student's attention to where the questions and answers are, I like to give it a little bit of a, of a background color. Um, let's do like a light green. Okay, and then I'm going to highlight these A1 and B1, B1, A2 and B2, and I'm going to bold those and center them because that's where my directions are going to be and my, um, my words for question and answer. So I'm going to make my directions blue so that it draws the attention to them. So directions, and then this is going to be a multiplication activity. Then I'm just going to put in questions here and answers here. Now, one more thing that I like to do is I like to give it um, borders so that it is just cleaner looking. Now I'm going to add my questions. So I'm going to do a seven times table and I'm just going to add all my questions straight down the question row and I'm going to leave the answers blank for right now. So I'm going to add in my seven times tables. There they are, but I'm going to leave my answers blank. Remember that. So now I need to prepare my canvas to put my pixel art on. So to do that, I'm going to highlight the remaining columns. And if you're not sure how to highlight multiple columns at a time, you'll click and drag holding down, if you're on a PC, the control button, and if you're on a Mac, the command button. So highlight all the way to Z, then just grab the edge of Z and make it a nice little square. Beautiful. So now we want to add our pixel art. And today I'm going to draw an avocado. So I'm going to highlight the squares that I want to make the outside outline of my avocado. That's going to be the outline of my avocado and I'm going to make it green. Then I need to do the inside of my avocado. So I'm going to make a little brown pit for the inside. So let's make this like a pit color. I'm going to do some eyes. So I'm going to make that like a light blue. I want to be able to see it when I um, put in my values. And if I just leave it white, it's going to look like the student got the answer wrong. So there's my eyes. I'm going to add some rosy little cheeks here. And now I want to add a little smile, a little avocado smile to his face. And then I want to frame it with the pick color again, just to round it out. There's the inside of my avocado. So now I need to color in the inside. Uh, a green color to make the color of the avocado. So that's, that's the color that I picked and I made a custom color. If you're not trying to make a custom color, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is pick a color that's close to it and then click the plus sign here. And that's going to bring up your palette and you can either put in a hex number if you have that, or you can just move it around and choose your color that you like. So I made this little green. And this is what I'm going to use to color my avocado. All right. So now that I have my avocado all colored in and drawn, I need to format my cells to conditional formatting rules so that they appear when you put in the correct answer. All right. It's a lot easier than I'm sure you think it probably is. So just follow along, pause when you need to, and let's get this rocking. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight multiple cells. Once again, to highlight multiple cells, you'll click on a cell. And then if you're on a PC, you'll hold down control key and click more cells. If you're on a MacBook, hold down the command key and click more cells. So I'm just going to hold down my, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hold down my control, my command key and click a bunch of cells. It doesn't matter. They can be random. You can just do the outline first if you want. Um, you can do a variety like I'm doing. It doesn't really matter. It's just up to your preference. And once you have a, about 10 or so cells highlighted, we're going to go to format and then we're going to go to conditional formatting. 
It's going to open up on the right hand side of your screen. The range that you, which are the cells that you highlighted are going to come up here. So don't change those or add anything there. Go down to where it says format rules. And this is where we're going to format our cells. So click on this drop down here and go all the way down to the bottom where it says custom formula is. Now we're going to type in our formula. So we want as every formula equals is our first sign. Then we're going to look at the column and row where our answer is going to be. And we're going to say that we want it to look at that column and row. So to do that, we're going to put in dollar sign column B. Then for our first question, which is seven times two, that is row three. So dollar sign three. Then if it's not equal to the answer, we're going to change it to white. Okay. And so the answer to seven times two is 14. I would recommend writing down your answers if they're more complicated problems on a separate sheet of paper, because if you put your answers in and try and do this, sometimes it messes up the formatting. So now that I have that, I want to change my formatting style from this light green to white. And I'm going to click done. And then when I click off of it, my rule stays and these cells disappear. Okay, I still don't have anything in my answer box. Just leave it blank for right now. So now I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do another conditional formatting rule. So I'm going to select another group of cells. Once again, they can be totally random. They can be just, you can just do the outline first if you want. Um, just don't do so many that you only have like two left at the end. So mine saves right here to add another rule. So I'm just going to click the plus sign. But if yours did not show up that way, it's under format and conditional formatting. But to add another rule, just click the plus sign. Once again, go down to custom formula is equal sign, dollar sign B, dollar sign. This time I'm looking at row four, seven times three. And if that's not equal to 21, then I want my squares to be right. And there's the second one. So I'm going to keep adding these up and putting in my formatting rules. And once I'm done, they will, there will be no more colored in cells on my spreadsheet and I'll know that it's ready for student use. So I'll see you back here when I get done with this. Hey there, welcome back. Now I'm done with formatting all my cells. So I'm going to check to make sure it works. I'm going to type in the answers and hit enter as I go down and you should see the colored cells begin to populate. Seven times two is 14. Seven times three is 21. 28. I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to get here and say it was seven times seven, I get it wrong. And I say it's 48. If I type in 48, nothing happens. So your student can self check this way because they'll notice that no more cells turned on their colors. So it's a great self checking review exercise for students or just to kind of help them speed up their fact fluency. You can do this with really any subject or activity. And it's an avocado. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a try and tell me how it goes. See you next time. Bye.